Welcome to Movie Caps. Today I will show you a fantasy, action, adventure film from 2020 titled The Old Guard. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Booker meets up with Andy on the street to tell her about a possible job they have in South Sudan rescuing hostages. He tells her that James Copley, a former member of the CIA, is freelancing these kinds of jobs now and wants them to do it. Andy doesn't want to take the job, she's convinced the world isn't worth saving anymore, but Booker convinces her to at least come back to the hotel and talk with Nikki and Joe about it. At the hotel, they all greet each other warmly, not having seen each other in a long time. The rest of the crew seems willing to take the job, but Andy is still hesitant. She doesn't trust Copley. They convince her to go with Booker to have a meeting with him just to see what he has to say and she agrees. While Andy and Booker sit at an outside table near a cafe, Nikki and Joe watch from the hotel window to make sure nothing goes wrong. Copley explains the situation to them and how they could help make a difference. Andy is reluctant, but takes the job. She asks Copley why he left the CIA and he tells her that he decided to take a break when his wife got sick, but when she died, he couldn't bring himself to go back. The crew takes a helicopter to South Sudan where they stake out the hostage situation. Once night falls, they silently execute the guards and make their way inside. Once in the bunker, they realize that there are no hostages. There are cameras on the ceiling and Andy realizes they've been set up. Dozens of military personnel enter the room and start unloading their guns on the floor. They fall to the ground, blood pooling around them. The soldiers turn their backs once they think they're dead, but their bodies start to rapidly heal and expel the bullets. They get up from the ground and kill the soldiers, all of this witnessed by Copley. They bury their bloody clothes in the sand and hop on a train. Inside, they discuss their options. Andy says that they have to find Copley and kill him since he has evidence of them coming back to life. In Afghanistan, Niles is a soldier in the American forces. She is sent on a job to check on a group of women that they think might be being held hostage by an enemy. When she confronts the women, they silently point her in the direction of the man, and she enters the building to kill him. She shoots him in the chest and when she goes to check on the body, the man slices her throat. Her friend holds her while she dies. On the train, the crew has dreams of Niles being killed, and in the medic tent in Afghanistan, Niles has dreams of the crew on the train. The crew realizes that the dreams mean that there's another one of them. This frustrates Andy because she was wanting to tie things off with Copley and go into hiding. The rest of the crew convince her that they need to find Niles and take her in. She says she'll go do it herself, and she'll meet them in Paris. They're tasked with tracking down Copley. Niles realizes her friends are all wary of her when they come to check on her and she doesn't even have a scar from the injury. The incident is reported, and Niles is told that she will be sent to Germany for more testing. She goes to her tent to find that her friends have already packed up her things. In England, Merrick gives a presentation to hundreds of possible donors for stem cell research. He tells them that he has the technology to figure out how to end human disease and prolong the human lifespan, all he needs is investment. Afterwards, Merrick meets with Copley and some of his team and discusses Andy and her crew. Copley shows him the footage he was able to get of them coming back to life, but Merrick is unsatisfied. He says he needs hard evidence because people will just think the video has been edited. He wants Copley to capture them and bring them to him. While Niles waits for a helicopter to pick her up to take her to Germany, Andy interferes and kidnaps her. She wakes up in the trunk of an army vehicle that Andy is driving and immediately tries to escape. She kicks out the back and falls to the ground but Andy stops driving to go get her. When Niles tries to run away, Andy shoots her in the back of the head. She waits for Niles to come back to life, and when she does, Andy tells her that if she wants answers, she'll have to get back in the car. Andy and Niles take a plane participating in drug trafficking to Paris. Niles seems unsatisfied with the answers Andy has given her, and after Andy goes to sleep, Niles binds her to her chair and holds a gun to the pilot's head, telling him to turn the plan around. Andy wakes up and tells the pilot to play dead in Russian so she can distract Niles. The pilot returns to flying the plane to Paris while Niles and Andy fight. Ultimately, Andy wins and is able to calm Niles down enough to get her on board with going to Paris. Once they land in Paris, they meet up with the rest of the crew in an old abandoned church. They have dinner and get to know each other. Booker became immortal in the 18th century, Nikki and Joe met at the Crusades in the 12th century as enemies and Andy tells that she is the oldest, but doesn't remember how old she actually is. They all go to bed, except Andy who sits up in a chair in the living room. In the middle of the night, Niles has a nightmare that wakes everyone up. She explains that she dreamt of a woman locked in an iron coffin drowning in the middle of the sea. The crew explains to her that she saw Quinn, an immortal woman that used to fight alongside Andy. When they were attempting to free women accused of witchcraft, 
they were caught and accused of witchcraft themselves. When the town realized they couldn't die, it just confirmed their suspicions and they set to work trying to figure out how to get rid of them. Eventually they separated the women and locked Quinn in an iron coffin and tossed it into the ocean. Inside, she drowns over and over, reviving only to die again, for eternity. They explain that it is possible for them to die, but it is very rare. They explain that eventually, after an immortal has been alive for long enough, their wounds just stop healing, meaning it is their time. Andy and Niles talk outside about their loved ones and the people they have to leave behind in order to live their new lives. While they talk, they hear soldiers outside the church. They realize Copley has found where they've been hiding. Andy takes care of the soldiers as Copley watches from a surveillance van nearby. When they re-enter the church, Joe and Nikki are nowhere to be found. Booker has been blown up by a grenade and it takes him a while to heal. Niles waits with Booker while Andy kills the rest of the soldiers. When she returns, they pack up their things and make their way to another hideout. Joe and Nikki wake up in a van surrounded by soldiers. The soldiers tease them for being gay and restrain them when they try to embrace. The van arrives to meet Copley in England, and the back of the van is open to reveal that Joe and Nikki have killed everyone inside while still being handcuffed. They are escorted to Merrick, who explains that he intends to use them for stem cell research and will conduct experiments on them until he figures out how to lengthen the human lifespan. He makes it clear that he doesn't care what he has to do to them or how much pain they're in, he just wants results. Nikki and Joe are taken away to a lab and Merrick demands that Copley bring him Andy and Booker. Andy, Booker, and Niles take shelter in an abandoned mine. While inside, Andy realizes that she's still bleeding from the fight at the church and isn't healing on her own. She discreetly steps out and Booker tells Niles about how hard it is to watch all of your loved ones die, especially when they don't believe them when they say that can't help. Andy drives to a pharmacy and purchases medical supplies. The cashier offers to help dress her wounds in the back room. When Andy asks why the woman is helping her, especially without asking any questions, the woman says that she expects Andy to pass on the act of kindness to someone else tomorrow. When Andy returns to the car, she attempts to come to terms with the fact that she is no longer immortal. Joe and Nikki are strapped down to medical chairs in Merrick's lab. Copley tries to tell Merrick that he has all the samples he could ever need and that he doesn't need to hold them hostage anymore. Merrick says he'll do whatever he wants with Joe and Nikki and he won't stop until he has results. Nikki tells the nurse that they aren't going to be able to produce any results, that people have done the same experiments on them in the past with the same justification of helping people, and it's never worked. Niall wakes up from a bad dream in the middle of the night and goes outside. She finds Andy going through her phone and they talk about family and the pain of being immortal. Booker meets with them to say that he's found a possible location where Copley might be and they head that way. They pull up outside the fence surrounding Copley's building and start preparing to enter. Andy instructs Booker to scout ahead, but Niles refuses to go through with it, saying she can't live with killing people and she wants to spend as much time with her family as she can before it's too late. Andy lets her take the car and the guns and points her in the direction of a train station. She enters the building alone with Booker. They find Copley in a room upstairs and hold him at gunpoint. To Andy's surprise, Booker shoots her in the side and restrains her. He explains that he set them up and brought everyone to Copley and Merrick because he hopes that Merrick can figure out some way to make them die so they don't have to suffer anymore. It's then that Booker realizes Andy isn't healing and starts to panic. Guards come in and restrain Andy and Booker and Copley protests, saying that he doesn't think Andy will survive the tests they're about to put her through. Merrick doesn't care, and the guards take them away. Merrick takes Andy and Booker to the testing room Joe and Nikki are restrained in. Copley explains to Merrick that if Andy is no longer immortal, then this testing will be murder and he will not support it. Merrick kicks him out and sets to work trying to keep Andy alive so they can run tests on her. Niles turns around and heads back to Merrick's base. She finds Copley and he explains what's going on. He tells her that he spent years doing research on Andy and her crew and all the good they've done for humanity during their lifetimes. He says he thought by bringing them in and doing this testing he would be helping the world, but realizes he was wrong and that they would do more good for the world if they had just left them alone. Niles convinces Copley to take her to where Merrick is keeping them and Copley gives her an access code. Niles makes her way through the small army kept in the building, and the soldiers report to Merrick that Niles is immortal too. She finds where they're being kept and frees them. Nikki and Joe are furious with Booker for betraying them, and Andy doesn't want to fight anymore. Andy convinces Joe and Nikki that now isn't the time to argue about this and Niles convinces Andy that she still has a promise to keep and a reason to fight. Niles provides them all with weapons and they move through the building to try and find and kill Merrick. They all do their best to cover Andy, 
but she quickly proves that she's still just as capable even though she's no longer immortal. They get to Merrick's office to find he isn't there and they see that the elevator is going down. Nikki and Joe go to chase after Merrick while Niles stays with Andy. The elevator going down was a ploy and Merrick shows up pointing a gun at Andy. Niles and Andy reenact the trick Andy played on her in the plane and Andy pretends to play dead to distract Merrick long enough for Niles to tackle him. They break through the window and tumble several stories before landing on a car, killing them both. Nikki and Joe go to check on Niles and help her out of the car. Andy meets up with them and they leave Merrick's body and drive away. Later, they have lunch and Booker waits outside while the rest of the crew decides what his punishment should be for betraying them. Niles goes outside to comfort him and he tells her she will make a great addition to the team. Andy talks with him on the beach and says they've decided that his punishment will be spending 100 years by himself. Since Andy is mortal, it means they will never see each other again. The group then confronts Copley, to whom they explain that any evidence of them being immortal has to be destroyed and also ask him for his help in fixing the world. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this.